Hey everybody, it's Brad. And I'm Krista. With the Big Family Homestead and it is that time of the year. Oh yeah. Oh, this is giddy time. It's giddy time because it's time to get your mind thinking about the garden. Yes, it is. It's, I cannot wait to be able to get my hands in the dirt and mm -hmm. play with all the dirt and get the, <laughs> and get the seeds growing. I, oh, it's so exciting. Gardening. Okay, here's the thing. Um, this actually, I got to pause real quick. This is a kind of a funny thing. A lot of you guys know we sell the Thrive Life freeze-dried foods, mm -hmm. and some of you seem baffled or even nasty about the fact that we have <laughs> freeze-dried foods and garden. Mm -hmm. They're they're not the same thing, guys. No, we can't grow pineapple here. We're in Wisconsin. Right, right. We um, we don't have any blueberry plants planted yet. We don't have any cherry trees or apple trees or peach trees yet. Whoa. So. <laughs> But that's not even the point. Right. The point is, you know, there are a lot of people that seem to be, like I said, either baffled or getting angry. Mm -hmm. uh, but here's the deal, kids. Homesteading is not just what you have in your garden. No. Uh, that would just be called gardening. <laughs> Homesteading is a whole lot more stuff about being self-reliant. Everything from learning and doing and making and being as much as you can without help from a store or whatever. So... Homesteading. Your pills, Garth. I know, I gotta calm down. I'm getting salty. <laughs> Homesteading is not just gardening. That's called gardening. Right. Homesteading involves a lot more uh, things. <laughs> uh, so anyway, we've got a list here, folks. Stop bouncing. I'm bouncing? You're gonna mess up the shot. <laughs> the camera's probably jiggling because yeah, of me. right. <laughs> We're gonna go through some of the things that we've learned over the years uh, and uh, in terms of gardening and gardening prep, what, this is huge. What to do and what not to do. We've made our fair share of mistakes, mm -hmm. and we don't want you to make those mistakes. Now, also, for those of you who may be watching going, I only have, a, I live in an apartment, and I only have a limited amount of space, mm -hmm. there are options for you, too. So don't think that this video is just for people that have, ooh, a big old garden. Because <laughs> it's not. It's for everybody. Yeah, it is for everybody. Um, let's talk first about, I think, um, seed management. <laughs> because, because there's a lot that goes into the seeds that you mm -hmm. want to put into the ground. Um, you know what, I'm, time out, we're gonna back up. We're gonna go to this one first. I can't see it. Here. What do you eat? Lots of things. Here's the deal. I think a lot of gardeners get really, really hung up on trying to put a billion different things in their gardens. Mm -hmm. And if you're like that, that's fine. But what my recommendation is, Plant what you eat. Right. I mean, if you sell those items at a farmer's market or something like that, then by all means grow that. But if you don't and you just want to have a garden um, for your family, grow what your family likes to eat. Don't grow Brussels sprouts if, and if nobody, nobody likes Brussels them. sprouts. That's silly. And also think about what you're going to preserve, the mm -hmm. canning side of it. Right. Um, you know, because when you're... when. It, this is all gonna feed together. All the stuff that we're talking about, whether it's gonna be the garden map, mm -hmm. um, fertilizers that we're gonna just basically touch on, and then seed management comes after um, deciding what it is that you got, you're, what you're actually gonna want to consume. Yep. So only grow what you're actually gonna use, okay? Now, seed management. Mama. Seed management. Well, when we first started gardening, stop it. Sorry. I had one of these file, fo actually this is an art activity tub, but it holds file folders, the hanging file folders. You just throw a tip it. Yeah. So I put a bunch of those in there, have them all nicely labeled and have all the seeds organized. Well, last summer, after our garden season time was done, I had all of these seeds that don't fit in here. And we were getting ready to move, so I bought these tubs from the dollar store, which work great too. So I'm going to label, this one would be flowers, this one would be, excuse me, I'm Ooh. getting ready to sneeze, root vegetables. Well, right now, they're not organized. I have flowers in here, I have alfalfa sprouts in here. These are not organized, but these were from the dollar store, and these are cheap, and it keeps critters 
out. The point is, get one of these tubs per uh, variety of however you want to split it up in your right. mind. If you want to call a tomato uh, something that it's not. Vining it, plants. Whatever. Or, yeah. However it is that you want to organize mm -hmm. it, but get one per category. Right. And then the next thing that we need to talk about when it comes to seed management is how old are your seeds? Exactly. Yeah. And how long to keep them. That's right, because each seed has a shelf life, mm -hmm. uh, and then they start to germinate really, really badly. Yeah, the rate of germination goes down every year that you have your seeds. So if you have seeds that are over five years old, your germination rate might be one in ten. So, yeah, seeds that are that old, you may want to just consider mm -hmm. scattering them for the birds. Right. Because that's probably about all they're going to be good for. Right, right. Keep an eye on your dates of your seeds. Mm -hmm. Clearly mark them if you've saved them, which we're going to talk about here in a mm -hmm. second. Yep. But if you have not saved them and they're come from like a store-bought kind of thing, like these guys mm -hmm. here, make sure that you can see the date, read the date. If not, right, right on, right, right on it. Yep. But that's really, really important. Now, um, let's talk about the garden planner. Okay. Yeah. The garden planner, I have just a simple little binder, uh, three ring binder with some tabs in it. Um, I have my companion gardening chart in the in the front here, what goes well with what, and you know, because some things don't go well together. Like carrots and tomatoes, they thrive beautifully together, but you can't put carrots and onions together, I think. Um, I can't remember. They just won't grow enough. well. Right. So I've got my dividers in here. I have graph paper for our new garden and then I have graph paper. I've saved all of our previous year's gardens so I can see what worked well with with other things, what didn't, what I planted where. So when you plant again in that spot you don't want to put potatoes in the same spot again. You don't want to put tomatoes in the same spot again. You want to mix it up a little bit. The reason for that <laughs> is because you're going to, the different plants are going to be taking different nutrients right. out of the ground at different rates. Exactly. And exactly. so you're going to have to keep in mind, you know, okay, I've got to refertilize this area differently than I'm going to refertilize that area. Mm -hmm. But continue on, please. Well, and then I also have a section which has nothing in it at the moment for a seed list. I have previously put up a list of all of the different seeds and different categories of what they are so that I don't have to thumb through my boxes every year. Um, I just go to this list. And then if I use up that seed, I cross it off and then it's, it's manageable. It's easier to manage. And then I've got animal stuff in the back. Yeah. Well, it's just so kind of it's like all our, together. This one is of our, my, our homestead book. One of our homestead books. Right. Now, um, here's the thing. When, when, you, when you sit down to actually plan out your garden, um, we recommend just getting some regular old graph paper and mark it out as one square is one foot. Right. Draw it out what you want and just sit there and noodle with the different ideas of space that you're going to need. You could say, well, you kind of got to reverse engineer like, oh, how many tomatoes do I really need? Mm -hmm. How many do I want? Am, Am I, I going to can use for canning? Right, exactly. And, and figure all those things in because if you're like, well, we, we, we do at least 100 pounds of spaghetti sauce a year. Well, how many plants are you going to need to support that? Mm -hmm. The main thing to remember is just reverse engineer how much you're going to need, whether you're preserving foods. You know, just keep in mind how many plants you're going to need so that you don't get caught on the wrong side of how much you're actually going to want. Right. Now, um mistakes we've made. Oh my goodness. Our first garden was uh, less than um, less than awesome. Well, let's just say I didn't know anything about gardening and I had this wild burr that I wanted to start a garden. Um, when I say I didn't know anything about gardening, I mean I didn't even know what seeds were supposed to look like. I was young <laughs> and inexperienced and didn't know anything. So I plant what I believe are lots tomato lots. seeds. Lots and lots of Well, and in Florida, I, j I didn't realize you should start your seeds and not do it in the summertime. And, you know, I, it was- She just put them straight into I the ground. I put seeds straight into the ground. Come to find out they weren't actually tomato seeds, they were cucumber seeds. So- You was, live and learn. Yeah, it was um, pretty funny. 
So moving on, other things that we always do when we are getting ready to, to plan out your garden. The map is, is really an important thing, but now here's, here's something else. This is like a two part thing that a lot of people, I'm telling you, uh, most people know about one, and we're talking fertilizing, okay? Mm -hmm. Most people know about one of these uh, secrets. Oh, secrets. It's not, it's not secret. a secret. Uh, but most people don't know about the second one. Now, the first, one of the things we will do right now is we will go and uh, get our vermicomposting set up, mm -hmm. back alive, back rocking, worms. Uh, because what we do is we use those worm castings to make what's called worm tea. And what it is, is it's literally billions of beneficial microbes and goodies that you can put directly into your garden that make your plants just go insane. Oh, and nice. um, keeps the pests away. Mm -hmm. Deer don't like it, but the plants love it. And so about now, we'll be getting our vermicomposting set up together. Mm -hmm. We have videos on it, so you can go ahead and search the videos, but all it is is basically a little wet, a little dry newspaper. Well, you, you, you well, explain Well, you can use some shredded paper that you've shredded in your um, in your shredder, and then some kitchen scraps. Uh, the only things don't put in there, don't put meat, don't put oranges, don't put or uh, onions. onions. But everything else you can put in there, banana peels, I would crush up the eggshells really fine because they those get left, but those will benefit your garden anyhow. Yeah, and there's several places online where you can get your worms, and the red wigglers are great. Yeah. Uh, and what happens is as that's, that food and uh, stuff just starts to break down, they'll eat through it, and they, the castings that they leave are absolute gold yes they are they are fantastic and the way we make our worm tea is real you basically have a five gallon bucket you can scale it up or down however you want but you get your water so it's not chlorinated so if you if you got bad chlorinated water stick a fish bubbler down in there for a few hours and it'll it'll get that chlorine out of there but then i'll take a, a big lump of the castings and i'll stick them in a mesh painter's bag so mm -hmm. kind of like it looks like a big whatever you want to come think of um, I dunk them down into the water. You could use old pantyhose, too. You could, sure. Anything that will permeate mm -hmm. the water through there. But you let them hang down halfway in the bucket, and then you feed the water uh, a couple tablespoons of unsulfured uh, molasses. Mm -hmm. And what happens is the microbes and all the good bacteria and all the yummy stuff that's in the, that compost starts to come alive. It starts to multiply, and they start eating that molasses. Mm -hmm. And then you can use that worm tea, well, you gotta use it pretty much right away. Like this, the next day, you gotta use it. Yeah. Uh, but that just makes your garden explode. Now, that's tip one. Get your worms going now. If you don't already have them going, it's not too late. Just watch some of our videos, and there's other videos that are great out there to uh, show you more about that. But the second one, and um, this one's huge. It's, it's called biochar. And uh, I guess like the fastest way to explain this is it's it's pretty much near carbon. Uh, and what, sorry, I'm, I'm bottlenecking. I'm thinking of 10 billion things, but I can only say one thing at a time. Um, cultures in South America, the Aztecs, they had these massive, massive civilizations and scientists were always baffled at how they had these humongous people concentrations without enough good agriculture land. Well, they figured out that they were using what's called biochar. They were making charcoal, and then they were inoculating the charcoal with a fertilizer. And when they put that into the ground, it, it was 300% better growth in their plants. Because if you look at a, a chunk of carbon uh, on a very microscopic level, something the size of a pencil, um, you know, eraser. a pencil eraser, if you unfolded all the tiny little tubes that are in there and, and rolled it out, it's actually over 100 square feet. And so what happens, Amazing. all of that fertilizer, all those waters and everything that, that, that is going to be beneficial to your plants, it gets all stuck into those tubes. And when it's a wet season, they don't need it. No. The plants don't need it. But when it's a drier season, they it leaches out into them. And so it basically is like the ultimate regulator uh, for your for your um, plants. Yeah, we do have videos on how to, to make biochar as well But it's basically charcoal carbon 
inoculated with our worm tea. Right. And the first year that we used biochar that had been inoculated with the worm tea, our tomato plants were six feet tall. And we... Re- and that's, we, that's only... I'm sorry to cut you off, okay. but that's because that was as big as the trellis we could make. Right. It was. They were starting to flop over. But we harvested tomatoes that were two and a half pounds off of this off of this tomato plants. It was amazing. So biochar, worm tea, you know, get your fertilizers going. Um, other stuff. Uh, mistakes we've made. Not trellising our tomatoes properly. <laughs> There's so many different ways that you can trellis it. There's the Florida weave, then there's those cages, then there you can get the... Um, the big Texas style ones. The, yeah, they're, but they're used... It's basically like rebar. Yeah, but they're used for the flooring of, of building foundations and you just make a big round cage. I think that's probably the strongest way you can do it. But there's, you know, it just it depends on what your garden looks like. You don't need these big old cages for little tiny plants. One but. one mistake that we have made regularly, and I, I hate to even say it because it's a little embarrassing, is that um, we pick the wrong area for our garden in terms of what the water, not... What the soil's like. What the soil's like, mm-hmm. but also not necessarily the sun because we've been wise about making sure that there's enough sunlight. Yeah. But low spots oh camera went blippy here i'll be right back more than once because we've had to move a lot in the past 10 years yeah. we'll situate a garden in a place where we're like this is great this is great and then not look at our low spots no because we when we move into the place it's and we get our garden set up it's dry and then and then we got a swamp we have the spring where and it's really really rainy and that's when you're planting your garden and it's a swamp <laughs> yeah tomato or put no excuse me onions don't really like to be under the water no they don't like being under the water i think the way we have our garden set up is on a hill so the drainage should be really good yeah and obviously if you don't know about um <coughs> raised beds there's huge value in raised beds i know the mitt lighter guarding is a mitt lighter gardening method or the back to Eden method. Those are two we have not tried yet. Right. Uh, mainly because it takes so long to get the soil to where it's going to be really, really beneficial. Yeah. If you plant a garden, you can't just put fresh wood chips on your garden. The acid that's in the wood chips will not allow your plants to grow. Those yeah. seed, those um, seeds, those wood chips need to sit for a few seasons. And we're no experts on that no, at all. No. Uh, there are plenty of mm-hmm. great channels out there. Yeah. Uh, MI Gardener's one. Oh, yeah. He does, he has a great video. Great Old videos. Alabama Gardener's mm-hmm. a great channel to watch. Mm-hmm. There's tons of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and so with that, uh, I would say now's the time to do the research. Put in, put in the time now while you can't put the plants in the ground anyway. Right. Get out there. And you know what? The, I think that gardeners are, good, are a, lot, a lot like farmers mm-hmm. in that you talk to a farmer about a way to do a thing right. and he'll tell you, mm-hmm. but you talk to another one and he'll tell you a different way and on and on and on. <coughs> and it's because it's ways that they've figured out how to do it that work for them. Exactly. And I think the same thing works for gardeners. Yeah. Everybody has a different way to do it because you all live in different areas. Yeah. So what's going to work here in Wisconsin is not going to work in, in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, that'd be nice, but yeah, no, it's not gonna happen. So, learn from our mistakes. Mm-hmm. Learn from some of the things we actually do that are mm-hmm. not bad ideas, right? And share your good ideas down below. Mm-hmm. So, with that, I think we're done. Okay, good. We're done. It's time for lunch. Yeah, I'm hungry. I know. I have a salad in the kitchen uh, waiting for me. So I'm Brad. I'm Krista. You guys have an amazing day. <laughs>